Welcome back. Today we're going to be reviewing the Schumacher SEV 1600 series of electric vehicle chargers. There's actually three different units in this lineup. The SEV 1600HW, which gets hardwired. The SEV 1600P1450, that comes with a NEMA 1450 plug. And the SEV 1600P650, that comes with a NEMA 6. 50 plug, as you may have imagined. The base unit is the same for all three units, just depends if you want to hardwire it or if you want one of those plug configurations. Let's open up the box and see what comes inside. Okay, so let's see what comes with the SEV 1600P1450. We have the body of the unit. Then this is the installation guide. It also comes with a nice mounting template so you know where to drill your two pilot holes to mount the unit, which we'll get into a little bit later. It has the uh, cable cradle, four screws, two of them to mount the unit, two of them to attach the cable cradle to the back of the unit. And this is the NEMA 1450 plug. Notice it only comes attached to about a 12 inch cable. And lastly, we have the J1772 connector. It comes with a nice rubber cap and it's connected to a long 25 foot cable. Before we jump into the full review, let's take a look at the Schumacher SEV 1600's key features. All versions of the SEV 1600 hardwired or plug-in cost $649. As for dimensions, it's 7.75 inches wide, 15 inches tall, and 5.25 inches deep. So it doesn't come off the wall too much. It's a 50 amp unit that can be dialed down to lower amperage, but at full power, it'll deliver up to 12 kilowatts. It has a 25 foot long cable as standard. That's a very long cable. It weighs 22.6 pounds. That's with the cable. It uses the J1772 connector, which is what all electric vehicles other than Tesla vehicles use in North America. But this unit will charge Tesla vehicles with the adapter that Tesla provides with all of its vehicles. The enclosure is NEMA 3 or IP66 rated. You can adjust the power with internal dip switches so it delivers anywhere between 3.8 kilowatt all the way up to the 12 kilowatt max power the operating temperature is pretty standard for EVSE 122 degrees Fahrenheit down to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit it's a Wi-Fi connected unit it also has a Bluetooth connection with the Schumacher app that we're going to take a look at later. It is safety certified. Uh, it has been MET tested and approved. Now I know MET isn't probably as commonly known or as accepted as UL, but they are on the same level of testing certification. So an MET certified unit is just as good as a UL certification as far as I'm concerned. It's Energy Star certified. It comes with a three year warranty and the unit has a sticker on it that says it's made in China. So that's where I assume it's made. However, when you take a look online, it says that the unit's made in Mexico. So I reached out to Schumacher and was told that they used to make them in China, but switched to a facility in Mexico a few months ago. And my unit was from the older inventory. So I guess moving forward, the units will be made in Mexico. If you're really concerned with the origin of manufacture for any product, you always go by the actual sticker or stamping on the unit and not what you read online. Now, unlike most chargers we test here, the cable and the plug doesn't come attached to the unit from the factory. Now, it's not the only EVSC that I've seen do this. The ChargePoint Home Flex also includes the cable and the plug separately, and the customer or the electrician has to attach it to the body of the unit. So we're gonna do that now. Uh, let's attach the NEMA 1450 plug that I have here. Uh, this is the NEMA 1450 version. As I mentioned earlier, it comes in a 650 plug, but you could also directly hardwire it. If you use one of the plug configurations, it's gonna be limited to delivering 
40 amps maximum, 9.6 kilowatt. But if you hardwire this unit, it can deliver up to 50 amps, which is 12 kilowatts. So it's a you know, significant increase in power delivery if your EV can accept more than 40 amps. And quite honestly, it's a better installation. I talk about this a lot here on the channel. Hardwiring is the way to go. It's a better, cleaner installation, less of a chance of a problem. It eliminates one potential problem, which is the outlet. We've seen a lot of failures on these outlets if you don't use a good, high-quality, industrial-grade NEMA 1450 or 650 outlet. We see a lot of failures. So I definitely recommend you getting this in the hardwired version and, and hardwiring it. You can have more potential power even if your EV today doesn't accept more than 40 amps, down the road you're next to EV May, and uh, as I said, it's a better, safer installation, and you're utilizing the full power of the unit. If the unit can deliver 50 amps, why not have it be able to deliver 50 amps, because down the road you may be able to use it. Now, I know I said it can deliver up to 50 amps, but you can also derate the unit all the way down to 16 amps if you install it on a circuit that can support higher amperage. I'm gonna show you how you do that inside the unit. And with that, let's take a look inside to see how you attach the, um, the charging cable as well as the plug and how you would hardwire it and also change the amperage output with the internal dip switches. So let's take a look inside. Okay, the first thing you need to do is remove, there's a screw underneath the unit here. We're gonna remove that screw, and that's going to allow us to take off this plastic cover plate. Now I want to point out, it has this rubber gasket here, and I notice sometimes when I've been uh, taking it off and putting it back on, when I put the unit back on, it might not be seated perfectly, and that would be a problem for waterproofing. So when you put the cover back on, make sure it's set just right before you snap the, uh, the outer cover back on. Now you'll see there's three screws underneath here. Let's remove those three screws. This pulls out, if you do it nice and carefully, the screws stay in there. You don't wanna lose those. Now we can see inside the unit. This side here is where you're going to install the power supply. The NEMA 1450 plugs are gonna come in here and attach there. If we were hardwiring, you could pipe the conduit up through here, but a cleaner installation is to use the knockout in the back of the unit right here. And when you do that, the connections are right there. A nice clean installation. If you do this outside, you wanna make sure that you also then seal the back of that with some sort of a, a, a sealant, a silicone or something, so water doesn't run down the wall and then get into the connections there. So be careful of, of that if, you, if this is an outside installation. And this unit is rated for outdoor use. It's, it's a, a NEMA 3 rating, uh, so it's good for outdoor use. Uh, now we'll take a look at the other side here. This is where you're gonna install the cable for the charging connector here. And as you can see, there's the three wires, but then there's also these two communication wires. They're gonna get hooked up to this little plug in on this side over here. I'm not gonna go over the whole installation where you're gonna see me put it together. It's kind of a su super simple thing. And also, quite honestly, as you know, I always recommend you get a licensed electrician to do any of your electrical work. I know a lot of do-it-yourselfers is gonna do this themselves. This is pretty simple. I think if you're fairly competent, you can do this safely. Um, but uh, I always recommend having a qualified electrician do your electrical uh, installations. Uh, but lastly, we're gonna take a look at the dip switches in here. You can see in the middle here, there's a little red platform there with uh, eight different dip switches. Now, depending on what the power outage for the unit's gonna be, you would adjust the dip switches there. Uh, when, it, when you get it with the NEMA 1450 or 650, it's gonna be set to put out 40 amps because that's the most uh, that a NEMA 1450 or 650 outlet can put out. It should be on a 50 amp circuit but the maximum power that it can put out is 80% of the circuit, which would be 40 amps, 9.6 kilowatts. But in the installation guide, it shows how you would adjust the dip switches depending on what power you would want. Now up here it tells you the power outages, the, circ the dedicated circuit breaker, the kilowatts it's gonna put out, the amperage, and then down here you'll see all the different uh, settings depending on if you want it uh, to put out 16 amps, 20 amps, uh, 40 amps, 48 amps, all, all the way up to uh, 
the uh, four, the 50 amps that the unit can put it. This actually shows uh, an 80 amp breaker, which you could have this on, but it's still going to put out 50 amps because the unit is is limited to 50 amps. But you, you you don't require an 80 amp breaker to put out the full 50 amps. Actually, a 70 amp breaker would do fine. A 60 amp breaker, the maximum you're supposed to put out is 48 amps. Um, but um, you know, uh, very few EVs can accept more than 48 amps. I mean, I actually have one that can, my F-150 Lightning, but um, this is where you set all the uh, internal dip switches to put out the proper amount of power depending on what circuit you're on. Next up, let's take a look at how you mount the unit to the wall. As mentioned earlier, it comes with a nice mounting template. So what you want to do is locate where on the wall that you want to install this. If, if it's in a plug-in unit, you have to be cognizant of the fact that the plug is only about 12 inches. So you want to make sure that you have your outlet installed very close to where you want to have the unit mounted. Once you've figured that out and you have your uh, outlet installed, what you want to do is put this on the wall here. You want to get the center of a stud. I mean, you could use drywall anchors, but to be honest with you, the, the unit is heavy. All electric vehicle charging equipment is relatively heavy. The cables are heavy. You really want to be able to bite into a stud if you can. If you can't, make sure you have really good drywall anchors. You just need to drill two holes now, uh, the top pilot hole and the bottom pilot hole. You can tape this on the wall, uh, make sure it's nice and level. Once you have that installed, or once you've drilled your holes, now you have, there's two mounting screws. One is slightly bigger than the other, and the one that's larger has a rubber gasket around the uh, screw itself. You can probably see that there, there's a little rubber gasket. This is for the lower screw. You don't wanna install that yet. What you do is, after you have your pilot hole drilled, you screw in the upper screw and you leave it sticking out of the wall somewhere between five and six millimeter. That's because the unit is gonna hang on that uh, before you attach the lower screw. Uh, you have this little tab on the top here where the screw basically, well, the charger will hang on that one first and then you center the bottom along with the pilot hole that you have drilled and you, you attach it, uh, and that's what really holds it on stronger because the, the top screw, it's basically just hanging on that. But uh, it's, a, it's a secure uh, way to do this. It's not the only charger that, uh, that hangs that way. Uh, so let's take a look at how it looks once you do that. But before we show it up on the wall, there is one thing you have to do. You have to attach the uh, cable holder here, which is mounts on the bottom of the unit. Turn the unit over, and you remove this black plug here, that really just covers the uh, hole that the lower screw is gonna attach to the wall. Not really sure why they need that for uh, transportation, but uh, uh, while it's in transit, but they put it on there. And then what we do is you take your, your cable, your cradle, and you attach it to the back there. You slide it over. There's two little holes here, and then the, the big hole that I just removed that cover for. It slides over the top like that. And now you take the two small screws that are provided with washers and you screw in the top two screws up here. Let me get these secured. Okay, once those two screws are in, you can see it's attached nice and tightly here. That's basically how it looks. Now, if you don't want to have the uh, cable management attached to the bottom of the unit here, you don't have to. You could simply take this and screw it into the wall somewhere. It, it'll fit nice and flush against the wall and you use the same two pilot holes. So if you want to mount the unit on one wall and then have the cable on another wall, maybe right where you're going to take it off the, the, the cable holder and plug in your vehicle, you can do that. You don't have to mount it to the back of the unit here. It won't interfere with anything else. I think most people are going to, but I just wanted to point out you don't have to. It's actually designed so that it can mount against the wall by itself. Okay. With the cable holder attached, I'm now going to uh, attach the NEMA 1450 and the cable for the connector, and uh, then we'll put it up on the wall. Let's see what it looks like once the cables are attached. This video, as well as all of the videos here on State of Charge, is sponsored by Qmerit. Once I've helped you decide which 
electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, then follow the link in the description of my videos and have QMerit install it. The unit is also a Wi-Fi connected smart charger. So I downloaded the app. It's called the Shoe Power app. I connected it to my home's Wi-Fi and everything seems fine. It shows that it's connected to Wi-Fi. It's connected to power, except every time I plug in one of my EVs, it still says not charging. So I uninstalled the app, reinstalled it again, went through the whole process, connected it to the Wi-Fi, and uh, it populates, the, the charger populates within the app. It's showing that it's connected to it. But every time I plug in, it still says it's not charging. You could see right now, it's charging right now. The green light is blinking. Come over to the charge port on my Lightning. And you could see both the light on the charge port blinking, as well as the green lights on the connector pulsing which is kind of a cool uh, option that they have there. The, there's LED lights on the connector handle that pulse when the car's charging. Some people might like that, some people might not like that. It, maybe it draws attention to the vehicle if it's parked outside somewhere. In any event, so this is two attempts of installing, connecting, and uh, it's not showing data. It's showing that it's not charging a vehicle, which it is right now. So that's a big fail. It's going to lose some points when we do our rating here. And it's unfortunate because I wanted to uh, review the app and uh, talk about some of the things that it shows. We're not going to be able to do that here today. I also just checked some of the online reviews and I noticed other people reported the same thing, that the app didn't work. Now, there were some people that reported the app worked and they liked what it displayed, but there were enough people posting that it didn't work combined with my experience to let me know this isn't just a one-off. And I think uh, Schumacher has some work to do on this app before it's really robust enough that people can rely on it. So I've been using the unit for a few weeks now and I've used it to charge my Ford F-150 Lightning, my Rivian R1S, and also had a friend bring his Tesla Model 3 over just to make sure there were no compatibility issues with Tesla vehicles. And it charged all the vehicles just fine. Of course, I needed to use the uh, Tesla adapter to plug into the Tesla charge port with the J1772, but all Teslas come with those adapters. So any Tesla owner should be able to use this unit here to charge their EV if they want to. So let's talk a little bit about the unit. First off, it's got a nice long cable. It's 25 feet long, but this cable is thick. I measured it to be 21 and a half millimeters. That's really thick for a charging cable. As a matter of fact, take a look right next to the unit and I have my Tesla wall connector. That's also a 48 amp unit. Now I know this can deliver a maximum of 50 amps a little bit more, but that wouldn't make a difference in the cable size, uh, two more amps. And the Tesla cable is only a little more than 14 millimeters thick. So it's a lot thicker than the Tesla cable. If you take a look to my left, this is my Ford Charge Station Pro. That's an 80 amp charger. I can deliver 80 amps to the vehicle. And that cable is actually slightly thinner than this cable. I measured that to be only a little bit more than 20 millimeters. So the 80 amp cable is actually thinner than what uh, Schumacher is using on their uh, 50 amp unit here. So I think it's excessively thick. And while some people might say, well, that's great for durability, it's going to last really long, we haven't noticed that the thinner cables have any more problems durability wise than the thicker ones. And I've been doing this for a long time. I've been covering and reviewing electric vehicle charging equipment for more than a decade now. And I haven't noticed the thinner cables like the Tesla cables that people responded and reached out to me and said, hey, my cable, I ran over it and it broke or I had a problem with it because it was thin and the, the outer jacket wore out. So I don't really see any advantage in having a thicker cable like this. I prefer my home charging equipment to have thinner cables. Public chargers are different. They get beaten up a lot. They get run over. I could see having a big thick outer jacket to protect the wires inside, but for home charging equipment, I think this is excessively thick. Now let's talk about the connector. This is a unique connector. I haven't seen this connector used on any other uh, charging equipment. I think Schumacher might have had it specced uh, specifically for them. It has a nice uh, rubber cover, but that's not completely unique. What is unique is uh, at the bottom here, you see this little cutout here? I've never seen that on any connector. And that's because 
the connector holster that the Schumacher has is different than any other connector holster. You notice there's two connector holsters. You can holster it on either side of the charger, which is pretty cool. I've never seen that on any charger either. But the unique part about this is even with the rubber cap on the top of the connector, it still holsters just fine. And that's because this tab here is really what holds it into the uh, connector holster. Typically with connector holsters, and I have a one here that you'd mount on the wall, the rocker lock on top that locks it to the car is what locks it to the connector holster. So you can't holster the connector with the rubber cover on it. But with the Schumacher, you could put it on if you'd like and sit it in here. It still locks in nice and easily. And it really locks really easily. No matter how you put it in here, it automatically locks. You can't miss, which is good. You don't want to have to be perfect and take your time and make sure you get it right in the connector holster. I like connector holsters that make it very easy for you to just stick the connector in and drop it in. This is a very good connector holster and it's probably gonna get more points on the charger rater for it because I really like this and it's unique. I like when people do things that nobody else is doing and this is definitely unique that it, you can holster it from either side and that uh, it's very easy to holster and it really protects the connector. If this is mounted outdoors, you could see that no rain is gonna get to the connector. It's all the way deep in there. Even a driving rain wouldn't get to the top of the connector to get to the pin. So it's a very good connector holster. Another thing I like about this connector is that it has LED lights on the side of it. Never seen that on a connector either. Really cool. I'd prefer if the LED light was on the front so it gave you a little guide to the charge port or to the connector holster, but uh, I've yet to see a connector do that. Hopefully someday somebody will. And Schumacher already has LEDs in the connector, so maybe they'll add one on the tip here. I think a lot of people would appreciate that. But it's pretty cool. Uh, these two uh, LED lights on the side of the connector light up while the vehicle is charging. They glow green, so pretty cool. I think some people might have an issue with that though because it will draw attention to your EV charging if it's parked outside in public and charging on one of these. So while it, it, some people will appreciate it, I also think some people might not like it. I also want to note that, uh, as I mentioned, I charged many different EVs with this and it does deliver the full 40 amps that it's supposed to. Uh, I measured it on all the EVs, a little over nine kilowatts, uh, all the EVs were accepting. So uh, it does deliver the power rating that it's supposed to, at least at, at 40 amps. I haven't hardwired this to see if it does at 48 amps, but I would imagine it would if it works perfectly at the 40 amps. Okay, so as far as testing goes, uh, the first test that we do is the automatic restart test. And in that test, I plug the uh, unit into a vehicle and shut the power off so that uh, to simulate a power outage. Now we do this because if your EV is charging overnight and you have a temporary power outage, you want to make sure as soon as power is restored, the EV continues to charge or it starts charging again. Some electric vehicle charging equipment, we've noticed once there's a power interruption, it faults out and it doesn't begin to restart charging once power is restored. That's a big problem. You wake up in the morning and you might have just had a five minute power outage, but the vehicle stopped charging all night. So I did that test with the Schumacher where I shut the power off and uh, worked perfectly very quickly restored power, started charging up again, so passed on the automatic restart test. Next up, let's see how this thick cable performed in our cable deep freeze test. So the charger's been in the freezer now for more than 24 hours, and this is a very deep freezer. It's well below zero degrees Fahrenheit. We do this test really for the people that live in the northern states. If you live in one of the southern states, southern California, southern Texas, Florida, you're probably not too concerned with having a frozen cable when you wake up in the morning. But for those that live in the northern states, it's a real issue, particularly if they mount the charger outside. During the winter months, it can be very cumbersome if the cable gets frozen stiff. And some of the cables are nice and flexible when they get cold, and some of them aren't. And if you have to unravel the cable and then roll it up every day, if the cable's frozen stiff, it really makes the whole charging experience very unpleasant. So let's take a look at how well the Schumacher's cable does. Now, if you remember, I talked about the thickness of the cable. Typically, the thicker cables don't perform as well. 
because when they get frozen, because they're so thick, they're very difficult to bend. The thinner cables, even if they're not really a good cold weather cable, because they're thinner, you can overpower them and bend them easily. So let's see how this one does. But first, let's take a look at just how cold it is in there. Negative 14.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yep, it's cold. <laughs> now let's take her out and see how well she does. I always coil up the cables in these small loops and then we'll see how well it can uh, uncoil and fold up in larger loops. Okay. My initial impressions are not good. Let's see here. Okay. <laughs> you see when it remains coiled up like a spring? That's not what you want to see. You want to see the cable almost immediately become easily manageable. Now, let's say you just unplugged your EV, and now you want to take this and coil it back up on the uh, cable holder. Not too good. <laughs> So that's gonna be a big fail. This isn't even gonna get um, like an average score. This is a huge fail. You could hear it cracking. So yeah, this is, this is a very bad result. Uh, it's a very poor cold weather cable. You see, <laughs> see how it just retains that small circle? Let me see if I can straighten it out. <laughs> It's starting to straighten, but you know, <laughs> who wants to do this, you know, in the morning after they get up and they unplug their car so they could coil it back up on the uh, cable holder. So let's see here. Now also, it's warm in the garage, so that's helping the cable start to thaw out. All right, it's, it's working, but uh, yeah. That's not really, that's not really how you want it to perform. You want the cable to perform a little bit better when it's cold. And, uh, you know, the fact that it is frozen very uh, solidly and it's such a thick cable, uh, this is not going to be a great cold weather cable for those people that live in the northern states and mount the charger outside. Okay, so next up, let's do our cable drop test. While we have the connector frozen, we drop it five times from about waist height to uh, test to see the cable durability. Now, I like this connector. I think it's a really good connector. It has a nice grip on it. It's got the LED lights on the side. Um, the connector feels great in your hand. Uh, hopefully, it uh, can withstand a few drops because you will drop your connector if you have an EV from time to time. Ooh, that time it felt right on the tab. Didn't break. I thought it might have broke it. And one more for good measure. Everything seems fine. Okay. She passes the connector drop test, but did get a fail on the cable deep freeze test. So as I noted earlier, I've been using the unit for a few weeks now and it's worked fine. It's charging my electric vehicles as it's supposed to. Uh, it's unfortunate about the app that I can't seem to get the app to connect and it is supposed to have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. It seems like the app does connect, but it won't register that the car is charging, which is unfortunate because we weren't able to test out those features. On the positive side, I really do like the connector. 
It's a nice, well-made, strong connector. I like the fact that this lower half here is uh, has uh, like a rubberized grip. The feel of it's good. It feels like it's a quality connector. It has the cap, which a lot of the uh, uh, connectors do, so there's nothing special about that. But it is a good, solid connector. And I also really like this interesting connector holster that you can holster it from both sides, which is super unique and it's really good it's functional especially if you're in a tight space and you can only have um you know if you want to holster a connector from this side or this side and it's up against a wall or something you don't have to choose you can you could pretty much mount this thing anywhere and still holster it another thing i found that's interesting a lot of people may use this to charge their tesla and if you have a non-tesla charger and you use the tesla adapter which you'd need to use to charge your tesla you can't holster the connector no none of the other connector holsters allow you to holster a, a tesla adapter so every time you charge the car you have to take this off in order to holster it or what happens more, more than likely people just end up leaving their ca their cable like that that's not great because it keeps the pins exposed to airborne contaminants but with the schumacher's holster it still fits in because it's not relying on the end to lock the uh, connector in. There's a little tab here which fits into this little space here, locks right in, and it's good. You could do it from either side. So I thought that was interesting. It's the only connector holster that I found that you can holster either the regular J1772 or a J1772 with a Tesla adapter on top of it, which is pretty cool. The whole design of this connector holster is, is, is excellent in my opinion. It's gonna get extra points on the charger rater for that. Now, as far as the price goes, it's unit $649, which is not inexpensive, but that's about the average price these days for a 50 amp electric vehicle charger. Now, of course, We've talked about the Emporia charger here quite a bit. It was my top rated charger for 2023, high power chargers, because it's only $400 and it can deliver the same amount of power as this. So it's a fantastic deal, the Emporia, but uh, I'm not gonna kill this price-wise because $649 is really about the average price these days for a 50 amp high powered charger. Uh, and let's talk about the cable. A nice 25 foot long cable, which is a, as long as you'll find attached to any electric vehicle charging equipment. I believe that's the longest it's allowed to be under NEC code. So uh, you're not going to get a cable that's longer than 25 feet, which is um, a, a nice cable. The only problem is it's just too thick. It's unnecessarily thick. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this, this cable's over 21 millimeters thick. And you compare it to the Tesla's wall connector cable. I don't know if you could see this here that closely, but there's a huge difference in size. And this is the, the Tesla wall connector can deliver just about the same amount of power. So, uh, you know, I don't understand why so many companies have these really thick cables. They don't all have really thick cables. Uh, some of them do and some of them don't. It's probably a cost factor, but uh, this is unnecessarily thick and uh, it's just, it's, it's not needed. And hopefully at some point, uh, Schumacher will source a better cable, one that's a little bit thinner and performs better in our cold weather testing. Okay, well, that's pretty much it for the review. The only thing we have left is to rate the charger. And for that, the first thing we'll do is our charger rater, our point-based charger rating system. I'll then provide my own personal score and we'll average the two for the final score. With that, let's go to the charger rater. Okay, in the cost and value category, it gets negative two points because the unit costs between 600 and 700 dollars and i'm going to give it an average score price wise because it is about the average price these days for a 50 amp smart charger uh, so it's going to finish up the cost and value category at 13 points next up power and weatherproof rating it gets two extra points because it is a 50 amp charger. It gets one point because it has adjustable power and that's through the dip switch. It gets two points if you can do it through the app and on the internal dip switch. This, you can only uh, set that uh, amperage inside the unit with the dip switch, so it gets one point. Weatherproof rating, it's NEMA three rated, no extra points. It is Energy Star certified, it gets a point. It passed our automatic restart test, it gets another point. Finishes up the power and weatherproof 
category with 20 points. Okay, for construction and durability. I'm giving the connector and connector holster two extra points for an excellent rating. I love this connector and connector holster. Very good job by uh, Schumacher here. Cable length, it gets an additional two points because it's greater than 23 feet long. For cable pliability, it gets negative one point because it actually performed very poorly in our deep freeze test. For robust construction, it doesn't lose any points, doesn't gain any. Removability, no points. Ease of installation, no points. Finishes up the construction and durability category with 18 total points. Okay, for smart and non-smart. It is getting the extra two points for the smart charger because it is a Wi-Fi connected smart charger. And, uh, you know, the charger rater gives it points for the ability to do that. I can then deduct the points in my personal rating, but it's getting the two points even though we weren't able to connect it here. PowerShare capable, it's not, no points. Amazon, Alexa, Google Assistant compatible. Now I'm not giving it any points here. But in one of the advertisements, I saw it said that it's smart home ready, which typically means it can interface with those smart home assistant systems. But I wasn't able to use it, so I'm not giving it any points here today. And I wasn't able to confirm with Schumacher that it works with uh, those systems either, even though I sent them an email, I didn't hear back from them yet. Charging record data, it's not getting any points there because I wasn't able to use it. And from the reports I've read online, the data it provides is not very extensive. It's limited when the app does work, so it wouldn't get a point anyway. Uh, is it OCPP compliant? There's nothing that I've read anywhere that states this is an OCPP compliant unit. I did reach out to Schumacher. Again, I didn't get response yet from them. So it's going to finish up the smart, non-smart category with 17 points. For safety certified and warranty, it is safety certified, no points deducted there. And you get one point for every year warranty. The unit has a three-year warranty, so it gets three points. Finishes up the safety certified and warranty category with 18 points. That gives the Schumacher SEV 1600 a grand total of 86 points on the charger rater. And that works out to a 4.3 out of five star rating. Okay, next, my personal score. I'm gonna give the Schumacher a 4.1 star out of five rating. My score would have definitely been higher if the app worked and I could use it as a smart charger. That's a big hit because it's kind of inexcusable that you can't pair the, with the app and use the functions that you expect when you pay for it. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm not the only one that's experienced this. The reviews on Amazon show other people had the app either not working or they say it works intermittently. It works sometimes. So Schumacher's got some work to do on this app to get it to be more robust so that people can rely on it. And also the cable is very poor cold weather cable. And quite honestly, uh, I know the price is average for a uh, 50 amp smart charger, but I'd like to see it just be a little bit less expensive and uh, that would boost up my personal score. So my 4.1 averaged in with the Charger Raiders 4.3 is gonna give the Schumacher SEV 1600 series a final score of 4.2 stars out of five. Okay, next up, let's take a look at my hits and misses for this unit. On the hit side, I like that it's a high power unit. This guy can deliver up to 50 amps and the power settings are adjustable so you can derate it if you need to. I love the connector. I talked about that. The connector is a very well-made connector. I like the LED lights on the side and I just like the feel of it in my hand. It's a good quality connector. It has an excellent connector holster. The fact that it's a dual port, you could holster it on either side and the fact that you can holster the connector with a Tesla adapter attached to it is a big deal because it's the only connector holster that I know of that you can do that with. Okay, on the miss side, okay, the app needs to work. That's inexcusable. They sell it with an app, it should work and it should work every time. It doesn't, they need to fix that. Poor cold weather cable, you saw in our cold weather test, it does not perform well when it's down near freezing or below freezing. The cable becomes unmanageable. It's too thick. Uh, Schumacher should source a thinner cable with a more rubberized jacket that works better in cold weather. And I'm also gonna ding it on the fact that it requires assembly. The 
cable and the plug aren't attached to this. I know it's easy and you just kind of slide them in and connect them, but you shouldn't have to do that. It's very few chargers. Actually, only the ChargePoint Home Flex requires you to do that also. And, uh, you know, I think that these things should come uh, fully assembled. You shouldn't have to do any work on your end just to put the thing together, especially when it's a plug-in unit. You should be able to just hang it on the wall, plug it in, and be good to go. All right, well, that's a wrap on our Shoemaker SEV 1600 series review. We hope you learned a little bit about the product here and helped you make a decision if you want to purchase it or not. If you do want to purchase it, you could follow the link in the description of this video to order the unit directly from Amazon. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, don't forget, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.